my name is Tiffany Brand, and I'm the Adult Education Technology Mentor for the state of New Hampshire. So my job is to help support adult education teachers throughout the state. And I'll let Jeanette introduce herself. Thank you, Tiffany and Jen. My name is Jeanette Chandler, and I am the Director of Professional Development Services in New Hampshire. And I, um, I'm really here to help share resources and uh, support Tiffany. She's wonderful. Thanks. So um, today we're talking about uh, how New Hampshire uh, is able to capture uh, distance learning hours, um, proxy hours that our students are completing, um, most of the time in a blended format. They're in our classes, but then they're doing a distance learning work uh, on their own. And, um, and uh, some of the time they're using uh, apps that track their time um, with the clock, uh, clock time model. So those apps are able to track their time um, and that's an easy transfer into attendance hours for our students. Um, but New Hampshire is also using the teacher verification model. And we have the definition of that uh, up on the screen. Um, and uh, it's important for us to be able to capture those instructional hours. And in order to do that, we, um, we use our teachers um, who are used to designing lessons every day for their face-to-face -face classes. They incorporate um, the WIOA requirements, college and career readiness standards, English language proficiency, digital literacy, uh, workforce preparation, all of those things that they, uh, they need to incorporate in their well-crafted lessons. And they're taking those skills and they're using them to design distance learning lessons um, that, uh, for their students. And uh, we, uh, we, as a state, don't assign particular curriculum um, that teachers have to use. We just know that they need to use research-based resources and use their skills to design these lessons. And they do that in face-to-face, -face, but also a distance learning format. Um, when they're distance learning and using that teacher verification model, um, we give them some guidance to help them make sure that they're capturing those hours appropriately. And uh, there's a couple of guidelines that, um, that the state gives the teachers. First of all, um, the, the time students are spending, it has to be documented in some way. And there's different ways that we, um, that we help and give our teachers guidance in doing that documentation. Um, uh, they need to show the time the students spent in learning, and the teachers need to be able to verify that the students are completing the learning assignments, they're spending the time um, that, uh, uh, on, the, on the assignments and they're learning from uh, what they're given. Um, and we also um, guide uh, the teachers to say they need to share with the student ahead of time what that amount of time um, a, a lesson might take. So, um, and we give, like I said, we give them some tools, some ideas to help them do this. And uh, a, a couple of them are up on the screen right now. So, um, when teachers are documenting time, we, uh, you can, they use paper tracking tools. And I have one of the tools that I designed um, last summer with the XPRIZE apps in mind because the XPRIZE apps that we were using didn't track time automatically. So um, we uh, gave this as for teachers to adapt and use so they could set goals with their students um, and figure out how much time they were going to be spending in the app and then allow the student an easy way to track their time um, as they were using an app. And then some questions that the teacher can have a conversation with the student about um, to verify that they were actually doing the learning activity um, and, uh, and what they were learning from it. So they share some things that they learned from the app, talk about the challenges that they might have had, and then um, did they reach their goal? Did they spend the amount of time in the app that they said they would? And this counts as documentation for that teacher verification model. And uh, students can then cap, uh, teachers can capture those hours that the students spent. Um, some students like to have, um, they, they use their phones, so they like to have, rather than a paper tracker to track their time, um, some uh, teachers have their students use time tracking apps, and one of them is Toggle. And there's a, the Toggle website, and it's also a smartphone app, where when a student is ready to begin um, an app or a website activity, they can uh, start the Toggle app and just make a note as to what app or activity they're doing. They can do their learning, their practice, 
and then tap the stop button in the toggle app and it captures that time with that uh, tagged label as to what activity they were in. They could then share that with their teacher with a screen capture or um, when they meet with the teacher again, because usually we're in a blended learning environment, they'll meet with the teacher and again, talk about the goals they had. Did they reach the time amount that they said uh, that they hoped they would and talk about their learning with the teachers to verify um, that they completed the activity. Lately though, we've been um, in this emergency um, uh, completely remote learning and a lot of our teachers are doing some live classes through Zoom. And um, one of the recommendations was just to help kind of keep things documented is you can record your Zoom class and when the class is recorded, you at least have um, a record of how much time you spent with your students in that live class. And that's just an easy way to help teachers document the time done in a, a live Zoom format. Um, other, other times they might, students might not be using an app or a website, but a teacher might design a whole lesson, a distance lesson that the students can use. And um, I, uh, I use this for my, I teach digital literacy classes and I design hyperdoc lessons so that it takes the students through a lesson that they might complete in class. And I know that when I have them face to face, this class might, uh, this uh, activity might take them one hour or two hours to do. The hyperdoc lesson takes them through the same thing they would see in class with videos replacing the interaction that we have. And then they complete activities to go along with the videos that they learn. Um, and then if they complete all the activities and turn them in, um, in my case, it's Google Classroom, they'll turn in the assignments. And then I can look, verify that they did the assignment and give them feedback. And that um, uh, because I know that that whole hyperdoc lesson I gave them, if I gave it in class, it would take a certain amount of time, like two hours, that I can give them the two hours of credit for completing it distance. And there's other tools you can use to not just hyperdocs, but um, Wakelet, Canvas, LMS, or Google Classroom, you can set up lessons in there. And again, using your experience with how a lesson might go in your classroom, you can then assign it a number of hours or a number of minutes um, if the student completes it at a distance. And the bit.ly link on the page has a link to examples of HyperDoc lessons and HyperDoc templates, um, as well as um, some, uh, a, a copy of the My App Goals printable and some other resources as well. And, I, uh, and so this is how, those are some examples of the ways we support teachers in using the teacher verification model to capture those distance learning hours um, when they're designing their lessons for their students.